for the future. And I assume that CARD has this on, on their agenda, but it seems to me the two big questions for the African rice sector moving forward is, are you going to favor large farms or small farms? Are you going to try to go with 50 hectare farms with core management, import, bringing finance, and uh, basically turnkey operations uh, that, that can produce high yields uh, reliably with, with good access to markets and, 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 and good information? Uh, if you like, a plantation approach to growing rice, or are you going to do this through the existing network and population of very small farmers who are undercapitalized, uh, who have very little knowledge? I mean, there are good rice farmers in Africa, but most farmers in Africa do not have much experience growing uh, modern high, high yield. Uh, rice grains. So the first policy question is going to be, are you going to push this infrastructure investment and development in favor of, of a large farm sector, or are you going to try to figure out a way to get this to small farmers? Uh, Prabhu's speech in, in Des Moines at the, the World Food Prize uh, in October said, we know small farmers can do this. I believe small farmers can do this. I am not at all convinced that African governments can do this. They're not, they have not shown a whole lot of skill at bringing small farmers into a highly productive farm market, uh, private sector driven uh, economy. So that's going to be a real challenge. If that's our goal, then we need to figure out how to talk to governments about getting small farmers productively into the system. Second point, I'll quit then. Are we aiming primarily at increasing rural rice consumption through production in local areas by small farmers for subsistence, or are we aiming primarily at the rapidly growing urban rice consumption, much of that supplied by imports, and so we would see this as an import substitution approach rather than a subsistence approach? understand that you've got that question on your agenda. Uh, I would love to see you do both, but my guess is that uh, resources are going to be scarce. Policy attention gets, it tends to get focused, and so I think you're going to have to face that one way or the other. Um, I was going to close by talking about all the problems with the world rice market and the facts the instability and the unreliability of that market pushing Africa to improve its own rice productivity simply as an insurance mechanism against being dependent on a highly risky, not untrustworthy, and unstable world rice market. Much of my time out here in, in the, the last couple of years, and I expect the next few years, I'm actually trying to make the world rice market more stable, more trustworthy, uh, more accessible, and so I'm actually hoping to solve some of your problems from the outside rather than uh, from, from the inside. Let me stop at that point. Thank you.
you, uh, you say no, that will not be the case despite the, that the growth. Why not just uh, tell the lion trade? What's wrong with that? That's still the old uh, answer. And also to say that technology is there, but there are other which are not there and which you don't think that it is going to come soon, which are the infrastructure, milling especially, irrigation, and then also the policy. And what, is, what should be the strategy, whether it is trying to import uh, to GF to our import substitution for the urban consumers or, or focus on the products. I think those are very good questions to start our uh, debate and our question. We have uh, our first speaker, Olek, because he had uh, to go somewhere, but we have two speakers and also I think there are here. Many now who know a lot about African context who can contribute. So, so I will take uh, a few and then yeah, I will start with Sarandi. Here comes the microphone. Nigeria and the Philippines. For all the same reasons, the Philippines would like to be self-sufficient in rice and avoid, uh, but that's not going to happen either. And it's not going to happen in Nigeria. Uh, so uh, we are sort of in that box. But there's one other thing that we haven't discussed, and that is uh, Asians running out of water. Uh, and you need water to produce rice. And uh, there's something called virtual water, which means you go to where the water is. And there's also something called, which is a little bit more negative, called water grab or land grab. Uh, what you need to think about is what is China doing in Africa? First of all, they're building a lot of infrastructure. But it's not rice mills, but they're building roads, they're doing a lot of things in Africa to helpful to build infrastructure. But, you know, uh, 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 a few months ago, Bob Singer was invited to Saudi Arabia. And I think he thought he was going to get some money from the Saudis. But the Saudis wanted advice about where to grow rice in Africa. Uh, and uh, so you have a question, uh, and, and, and you know when the Chinese grow rice in Africa, they don't grow it the way the Africans do, they grow it the way the Chinese do. Uh, and they hire cheap labor, and uh, I don't know exactly what they do with the rice once, once they get it grown, whether it goes back to China or whether it feeds the uh, large army of Chinese that are now working in Africa, I'm not sure. But it, it, I don't think it helps the African countries to develop their own rice because the technology they're using is not the kind of technology I think that, that small African farmers need to use. So I think that, that what I'm saying is that somehow this needs to be put into the equation of where is the future for African rice. I'll take a few more questions. Yes, no problem. Yeah. Peter, you were not here yesterday when I made a comment on 
on the very question you brought up, which is how much rice should Africa import relative to domestic production? And I think it's, it's not an either-or issue. We all agree with that. And I just want to put some numbers on the table. I happen to know these numbers because I just looked at them while I was bored on the flight. Um, right now, approximately the demand for rice in Africa is close to 30 million tons. Give or take. Uh, That's milk right, rice. Milk rice. Yeah. Milk. <coughs> milk rice. Right now, the total cultivated area under rice is around 5 million hectares. Okay? So, Let's take an average of two tons per hectare. You've got about 10 million tons that's coming out in Africa today. And with a little bit of effort, you can make that three tons, right? So you're going to get about half of your requirement with a little bit of effort. With, with quite a lot of effort, you can make that four tons and get a significant share of, of that um, requirements coming out of Africa. And much of that's going to be for, for areas where consumption is more local, for remote areas, etc. And you still have urban populations in cities like Lagos, etc., where it makes sense to you. I don't think there's that level of strategic discussion taking place around rights in Africa. I think much of the discussion around rice in Africa is should we Africa import, should Africa produce its own, but we're not taking, we're not opening up the map of Africa and saying where can we increase productivity and what's the cost of doing that, etc. And I hope CARD can do that. You know, we're trying this from the Gates Foundation side, but it's really important for people to take that broader perspective. The second question, and so that's not a question, it's a comment, and I have a, a question on CARD, which is um, the South-South cooperation which you've got is really useful. I'm wondering why some very important players in South-South cooperation are not in CARD and should be there. Uh, in your list, you don't have China, you don't have India, you don't have several other countries who are big players in rice. And, and, and these countries are doing parallel activities in Africa, which is outside of CAR. And, and I think at this stage, getting everybody into the same tent is better than people being in different groups. Thanks. I don't think either of